whenever you hear that you know it is about to rain today um or um, this is the hottest day in the in the in the last uh, 10 years or 15 years or uh, you know it is this year or this month it will rain less than the last couple of years how do we get to know the know such kind of data or information basically everything comes with you know the average so what the scientists do or uh, climate um, guys do yeah what they normally do um, they take the average of of uh, data of rainfall or the you know the hotness um, or the temperature of last couple of months or couple of years and they try to analyze it with the current um, scenario and at the end it's all called statistics i mean it, it everything comes in the in the in the way of statistics and then we will we will exactly doing um, the same thing we will go through some real um, scenarios um to understand how we can really use this uh, statistics in excel as well as in python hey hello everyone welcome to this series of uh, statistics with excel and python now in this um, video we will go through um, what is mean what is mode and uh, what is median so um so this this is a list of uh, numbers that we have and then we will try to find out mean median and mode so in statistics uh, the mean is actually the average you know in in day to day to day life we normally speak average and uh, that is what exactly the mean is in statistics so how do we calculate the average um generally um you know um, it is it is a sum of uh, the total number of uh, items value uh, and divided by the count right so here we have like um 50 so this is this is the formula of uh, the average so what we do we sum up all these items and then divide it with uh, divide it it with the total number of items so uh, it, this is how it's calculated now we don't need to do that um within excel we have a formula which is average and then just you know select the list of all items and you will get the same 50 right so let's not do this way now uh, i'll come to the median part what is median but before that let's do the mode part as well now what is mode part now suppose um, generally what is mode it is a it finds a duplicate um, value within a list now let's say uh, the formula is mode and then you select the list of numbers here you will get an error why because there are no uh, duplicate number but now let's suppose um, we have a duplicate number 41 and then if you update this list to a7 you will get 41 right so mode is basically it finds a uh, duplicate item now what i also you know uh, thought to just show you now if you ask what we have duplicate night uh, duplicate number of uh, list of items Uh, like we here we have 40 um 32 41 and here also we have uh 41 and 32 so which one it will get it will basically find the first uh, duplicate item so 32 comes first in the list so it brings up 32 right uh now let's go to what is median so median it it's basically the the middle um number in a list of items so now let's say uh, i'll just remove this so that you know we don't I mean, it's of no use um uh, 41 because this is what the I, correct data is because i don't want to you know mess with the data uh, basically in in statistics it's very important that you need to have a good data the data with assumptions um is not good uh, you will get to know in um, in in a upcoming video or in uh, after some time that you know having a good data is really important especially when we when we work with standard deviation or deviation error and all and it actually finds out um whether this uh, the sample data is perfectly fine or not okay so we will work with this data now mode uh, as i said since we do not have any duplicate data it will show it as it is now what basically median does it finds a uh, middle number in a sorted data if we find the middle number over here i'll just give you give you a kind of you know what it basically does it gave us 49 but 49 is though not there in this list why because um if you see um, the list of items that we have is even number so basically you cannot find because uh, 
if if it select the top three and then we have bottom three then there is no number at the mid so what it basically does if the total number of items are even so what it basically does it um does something like you know um count of this divided by two which is three and then we also do count and then plus one so now um we have um what we basically does we have to um calculate the two mid positions when we have even number of when we have total um even numbers or the count right so we have three and four so with this what we do with the three and four we basically find the third position which is the 46 and then we find the fourth position which is 52 now what we do we basically try to find the uh, median so how we do how do we find the median so in this in this uh, situation where we have even number of items we basically say um, the sum of the third and fourth item divided by two it's it comes to be 49 now is it correct let's find out that as well so if i simply say is equal to median uh, which uses the you know um, access function and i'm selecting the list of all numbers which comes to be 49 so it's a correct so yeah i mean these both values are correct and now suppose uh, for an example if what if we have one more item over here now suppose if it is like 70 okay and then if we basically i don't want to use this uh, so uh, what if we have one more item over here um, and then we increase the range so now it will show you 52 why because 52 comes in between um, top three and bottom three items so 52 is a number of uh, number for the median part why because uh, now you have uh, odd number of or the count is odd now you have seven items in the list so that's why it comes out to be median to be 52 right um so this is how the how the you know uh, mean median and mode is um, calculated and in the coming videos uh, we will talk about uh, measurements which is really important in statistics um, after that we will discuss about correlation and then um, simply simple uh, linear regression so yeah thank you so much have a great day take care Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to the series of statistics uh, with uh, Excel and Python. So today we will go through what are measurements and uh, why do we use measurements or different types of uh, measurements. So um, when we are when we are um, dealing with you know statistics, um, we have to know the reliability of the figures or you know the data. So to know the reliability, we have couple of measurements which we can use and um, basically it's it's more about how confident are we with the data right so in this process there are a couple of um, calculations that we can do and understand um, how or you know how they are actually gets us to know uh, whether that data is correct or not so first uh, for that let's create some um, some measurements so those are like you know range variance standard deviation and standard error so what is um, <clears throat> uh, so what is range? Um, so basically, it's the difference between the minimum and the maximum. So let's say max of list of numbers, right? Um, minus minimum, and then we can say the list of numbers. So this is a range. And with, with an example, I will show you how this, uh, how we can actually, you know, um, get to know whether this data is correct or not. I'll give you an example later on. Now, what is variance? First of all, um, I'll show you the simple formula to um, create the variance. And then I will show you the process also, uh, how this variance can be calculated manually on, uh, on, on you know, list of, or with paper and pen, right? So variance is uh, normally we can use um, you know where, where function and then list, pass the list of numbers in that. Now uh, for the standard deviation, uh, basically the standard deviation is the 
square root of variance uh, but uh, there is a formula as well if you would like to create st standard deviation and then the list of numbers right and then standard error is basically standard deviation divided by uh, i think it's um, sqrt count of list of numbers so this is standard error now uh, i'll give you an example of how the variance can be calculated because i think this is uh, really important for you to understand the calculation behind the variance because less rest are like very simple to understand but unless you don't understand the variance uh, i mean it's, it's good to know the background behind the variance calculation so um, we have a list of uh, numbers with us over here so what we will do first we will create the mean so we already have a mean with us right so we will use this mean and then um, we have to calculate the deviation from mean for each numbers so let's say <coughs> deviation i'll just deviation right um so let's say or i will create over here so is equal to 46 minus 50 I need to log this D. Okay, so we have like what? Uh, six. Okay, we are correct. Um, we have six items. So there is a deviation of each uh, numbers over here. So again, what we are doing, we are basically trying to understand the uh, the calculation behind the variance. Okay, now we have um, the deviation with each numbers. Now we, what we are going to do, we will um, multiply this. Uh, okay, let's um, do the square of each number. So power of this number and 2, I think, right? Uh, let me just check. Yeah, that's right. Now this is square of each numbers. Now what we're gonna do? Um, now let's say the sum. Sum is this one. Uh, right. Um, this is the sum of uh, all the squares. Now, how do we calculate the variance? The variance is, is simple. Simply uh, the sum of square divided by count of numbers, right? And minus one. And then this is the bracket that we need to do. So this is what? Um, so this is the variance, I would say. Hmm. so this is how the variance is calculated so first we, what we do we uh, create the vari uh, deviation so this is the deviation that we have for each number and for the uh, deviation we have what we are doing uh, we are minus uh, subtracting this from uh, the mean or the average and once we get the deviation we are squaring uh, that deviation with uh, the power thing uh, power uh, function and then once we get the square we are summing up uh, those squares and then dividing it with the total number of items minus one so that's how we calculate the variance and then again standard deviation is um, you know the standard deviation we have the formula or if you actually want not to use the standard deviation function um, we can also do something let me show you it over here so standard deviation is basically is equal to sqrt of variance so this is standard deviation again and then standard error is you know standard deviation divided by the total number of uh, items of the, the square root of the total number of items over here 
so um, this was the formulas that we created now what we will do we will create a sample of you know or i'll give you an example how actually these um, values or the measurements can determine whether the data is correct or not so i have a sample over here so we have two students in a classroom and we asked each student to go through go to um, you know um, six students and get their uh, marks right um, and one of the student has um, actually gone has gone through gone to each student and asked them for their marks uh, and then uh, one of the student has given this data hypothetically like he or she was very lazy to go to each student and ask for the marks um, but um, yeah one is correct and the other one is wrong now what we gonna do we gonna get to know which student has actually given us the correct uh, values okay um, so this is average or we call it mean right so what is mean we normally have range of this and then median is median of these numbers mode basically we won't get mode because we don't have duplicate numbers over here so it will be an error um, range is maximum of these numbers minus minimum of these numbers Uh, what is variance variance we can simply calculate like this right um, standard deviation is std of the list of numbers I would say but we could have square root it on the variance but it's okay and then what is standard error is standard deviation divided by um, sqrt count of the numbers right now uh, let's calculate for the same for the student 2 as well is it correct yes this is correct now I'll, I'll show you why why uh, and which student was lying or which student has given us the fake data now uh, see the the average or here you can see the standard deviation is is very high your variance is very high um, your standard error is very high so these are the parameters which which can actually tell us you know um that um, the figures are the figures that has been shared by student two is is fake normally you know the the standard deviation or uh, you know uh, variance or the standard error these tend to be very small uh and then here it's it's very high for student two so at the end uh, the figures shared by student one is correct and uh, not by student two so this was measurements i think uh, this was a pretty um, i don't know how much long it was but uh, this was very useful or this is very useful i would say so try to understand the logic behind how to calculate these things and then you will get to know uh, how we can really use this but i think this example was pretty much straightforward for you to understand um, the logic behind you know the measurements okay this was great thank you so much have a great day Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to this series of um, statistics with uh, Excellent Python. So in this video, we will go through what is um, correlation. It helps us to understand the relation between two sets of data or um, two values, uh, right? So how the correlation works? Uh, now, suppose if uh, one set of data is increasing and uh, the other set of data, whether it's increasing uh, or not or decreasing or not, now generally um, there are three kind of correlations 
one is positive correlation one is negative correlation and then one is neutral so neutral means uh, there is no relation between um, you know these uh, the two data and uh, the positive is as as one number of uh, list of data increases the other increases and then the negative is once one data if the one list of data is increasing the other one is decreasing now for an example let's say we have um, you know these four list of data um, so in the positive correlations normally what happens um, now suppose uh, with increase of list of data so when one is in, uh, when one data is one the other data two is 10 so basically it's increasing you know uh, so there is a positive correlation now for an example this one uh, the when we do the correlation between data two and data three uh, if data two is increasing data three is decreasing so there is a negative correlation between these two uh, but now if you see um, the relation between data three or data one and data four i mean uh, data 4 is not uh, no, uh, changing at all. So this is a neutral correlation. Uh, now I will show you uh, it between uh, with the with the help of uh, the example. Now so let's say comparison. Okay. Compa comparison. Okay. Now what we are comparing? We are comparing data 1 and data two and let's say we are again comparing data one and data three then we have data one and data four okay now how do we calculate this uh, let's say correlation right so there is a simple formula c o r r e l so what we are doing um, so what we need to do we have to select the array one so array one is like a list of numbers so we are selecting data one since we are comparing with data one and data two and then comma then we are selecting array two so which is basically data two over here so we are selecting a list of data over here um, so as we said you know since the correlation is one I'll just uh, make it more you know like okay now it's a positive correlation why because um, since data 1 is increasing the data 2 is also increasing right so it's a positive correlation now let's do the correlation C -O -R -R. Um, correlation between data 1 and data 3 so I'm selecting list of um, 1 and then we are data 3 right now it's a negative correlation why um, since the data one is increasing data three is decreasing so it's a negative correlation now we have data one and data four so data one and data four so uh, why is it giving an error because um, normally you know um, if they are not correlated so basically it will give you an error i mean it's perfectly fine uh, it normally equal to um, zero I would say hmm. um, so yeah now let's uh, do one thing um, let's create a graph with this um, with this with this what we say with this data right uh, let's first create a positive correlation uh, data between these two uh, insert So if you see, uh, so what I did basically, um, I went to insert and then we selected um, scatter plot and within scatter plot we selected this one, you know, scatter with smooth lines and markers. So basically what it does, uh, it gives you markers as well, you know, wherever we have points, uh, it uh, gives you markers as well. Hmm? So X axis is basically the data one and then Y axis is data two, uh, which is this one. So basically it, um, it shows you a simple um, line or a straight line 
which says that you know it's a it's a positive correlation so whenever data x is increasing data y is also increasing now uh, let's create um, the correlation uh, graph for uh, data 1 and data 3 so for this we don't need to basically go to you know um, or we create a new data no we don't need to so what we gonna do we gonna change the data set so instead of now b i'm selecting data c okay and okay now if you see um there is a negative correlation basically as soon as i mean uh, once uh, this data one is increasing the data two or data three is decreasing so this is called a negative correlation now uh, let's do the fourth or the last one the um, now what we're gonna do uh, let's show this whole data in one graph so um, basically the x-axis will be the data one and then uh, rest of the data will show you uh, in the same graph now for that let's do um, the data change so we are select right click and uh, select data and then instead of giving the x-axis or y-axis um, let's give the whole data section to to this place uh, or let's select the whole data and then click ok now uh, if you see we have the whole you know um, the correlation the positive one is in blue the negative one is uh, in orange and the neutral one is in um, straight line but how do we get to know how you know which line shows what thing so what for that what you can do go to the uh, format uh, so go to the chart design um, the quick layout so in this if you see uh, we can use the first one no. No. Uh, let's select this one uh, what I did I clicked on uh, quick chart and the first one we selected that and then if you want to change now see we have these are called uh, legends and um, now it will show you data one two or three and for this uh, let's make this um, yeah let's let's like it keep it like that only let's change the chart title uh, rename this to correlation chart okay um, so yeah I mean this is this is it um, I think we are good then thank you so much have a great day Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to this series of um, statistics with Excel and Python. Um, in this video, we will go through what is simple linear regression uh, and how it can help us in um, statistics. Um, in the previous video, we went through what is correlation and um, how is it different um, from the simple linear regression. The simple linear regression is is used to investigate the you know association between two variables um, using regression. And uh, regression is used um, when we have a reason to believe that you know there are uh, that the changes in one um, set of data or the variable can cause um, the, 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 um, the changes in the another um, set of data. Now sometimes um, you know correlation is not actually uh, it does not give uh, an evidence you know for a casual relationship. Um, but we when we see the data you know um, it, it shows there are there are kind of some relationship um, but we need to have a proper you know the 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 figures to demonstrate that and you know there is a uh, relation and um, the simplest way is to is to you know um, to create that relationship or to show that relationship is to um, get a straight line uh, between that that two um, set of data and um, I think that can be achieved with the with the formula of uh, linear regression, which is um, I'll just write it over here, uh, which is called Fy equal to mx. Then there is c, which is uh, constant. Um, we will talk about this uh, when we have a proper example. Now, this um, this actually fits a straight line uh, to the data. You know, using the least squares method and um, gives the value of the slope m which is which is this one and then uh, the intercept um, that defines that line now there are different uh, methods of calculating the slope and um, intercept 
of a, of a linear regression in uh, Excel. But the simplest way or the simplest method is to produce a scatter graph um, and then uh, no, add, a, add a trend line. So I'll show you how it is done. Um, so let's say we have a list. Um, we, have, we have an example over here, which is basically the wood thick, um, which is in centimeter. And then um, we have what uh, absorbance of that wood, which is in milliliter right so basically what we say if uh, the wood is this much centimeter uh, thick then it will absorb this much of milliliter but we need to understand you know um, what is the relationship between um, these two things or these two columns or data let's create a scatter plot first um, so we select the data we go to insert and then uh, click on this and then earlier in the previous video we we, we selected uh, the smooth lines but this time we are simply selecting the scatter plot so this is the absorbance and then this is um, your the wood thickness now there if you see there is a relation uh, with naked eye we can see there is a relation but how do we get to know whether there is an actual relation between these two or not now for that um, there is a way in this um, what we say in the chart let's select uh, one of the points and then add trend line now there is a trend uh, we can surely we can you know, surely see the trend now let's add some properties as well where we're, and sim display equation on chart and then display r squared value on chart now see um, the formula that i wrote earlier was what um, y is equal to mx plus plus c right plus c now uh, what it says Huh? Now, um, over if you see over here, we, we have y is equal to mx plus c, right? So, I think the formula is correct for us uh, because uh, this is being created by the um, Excel, um, Excel itself. So, we cannot say that. So, there is surely there is a relation between these two. Now, if you... Um, if you if you if you um, see this thing um, so let's say um, I will say just move this formula over here so what is y we have y equal to 0 0.0139 okay oh sorry this is not y this is m now c is what c is 0 0.0668 now let's say when um now what is this now when x is suppose um three right now let's say x is three what will the what will be the value of y right so let's do the formula of um y so y equal to what is m m is this one into x is 3 into x plus c so this is why um, right so let's um, let's let's calculate the y for all these figures right mm. it's just a simple formula now it, it, it isn't um, much complicated so let's say this is a formula that we have right and uh, our m and uh, c will stay constant or yeah so let's lock this and let's lock f5 as well no not uh, it's basically what mx so x is this one right so this is uh, f3 we need to lock this one
okay so this is this is the um i would say the relation y right so we have the y value y value as well uh now we have something over here what is called r square so um what is r square so we we can say it's it's a measurement of goodness of the fit um, of the linear regression so we say um when r square is is closer to 0 or 0 we can say that you know there is no relation between these two um values and then when it is more closer towards the the one it's um these dots will get more closer to the trend line right and if it is closer to zeros um, i mean the r r square is if it is close to the zero or you know like 0.001 something like that then we can say these dots will go more far from the from the centralized you know the trend line so that's how it is um for an example um if you how do i show you so let's say um if r square you know um uh, let let me move it it up it there and then let me close this so um as i was saying what is r square so basically r square is something you know if um the r square is uh, is equal to 0 so the the dots are not closer to the line and um, we can say that you know x the value of x doesn't help to create the um uh, create um, or it doesn't help to predict the value of y and then if it is r square it is um is equal to 0.5 or somewhere near near to that there is a trend line but um, the the dots um, are or the scatters are like more far from the center line and if the r square is equal to 1 then it's like a straight line with all the points like all these points are um, are on the trend line or the on the centralized line 